Alrighty. Welcome back to this EE project series that I'm doing. So now we are on the minor component calculation section of the project. So this is where we calculate all those worrisome looking resistors and capacitors that were right around our chip that we're like trying to figure out exactly how they worked and all that. And so we'll also get a little bit of insight as to what exactly they're doing. But I'll say quickly as a brief introduction, like their sole job is to send information into these pins and maybe help it operate a little bit. Okay, like some, some of them are there to help provide the right amount of power to the pins. Um, some of them are literally just, literally just there to provide information. So um, this, the equations are very simple, very straightforward. So yeah, we'll just, we'll get right into it. So the first one on, up on the list is uh, CDD or the capacitor that is at the input of the BDD pin. I'll just go back to the schematic. Uh, it's this one right here, C103, that sits at the input of the BDD pin. Let me see if it's on the application schematic. Um, I don't have that up. Don't worry. I'll, I'll, I mean, I showed it. That's what it looks like on my actual schematic, so I think that's good enough. Um, so CDD, let's see what the, if the glossary has that listed. Okay, so CDD is the minimum required capacitance on the VDD pin. So here, well, let me see if I'm pulled up on the data sheet. Um, so it gives like a brief paragraph. And I would say these are good to read because then it kind of gives you an insight as to how they're run. So it says the capacitance on VDD needs to supply the device operating current until the output of the converter reaches the target minimum operating voltage in constant current regulation at this time auxiliary winding can sustain the voltage to the ucc 28700 the total output current available to the load and to charge the output capacitor is the constant current regulation target so um basically and if you look also in the data sheet they make a note that when you look at this equation and we solve for this value that it um they say that because the the ic the uh, ic the flyback controller operates at a wide input that we are, are able to use a very small input capacitor on this because you look at this maybe you've already caught on but this capacitor right here is doing the same job as this capacitor over here like their output applications are just a little bit different like so it looks very similar uh, ignore this dot here if you're freaking out that the dots are backwards. This dot's supposed to be up here because uh, that, or else this diode would be pointed the wrong way. Um, I actually made a video about that, which is funny, and I explained like why it needs to be that way. So yeah, don't don't worry about that. Hopefully you don't freak out. Um, so yeah, like I said, this this capacitor on the output is doing the same thing as this capacitor right here. They're they're just supplying power to different places, and this one requires much less uh, consistent power. So remember. And we're talking about the load step part of this. So in this case, the transient response to the load here is much, much less. Like this capacitor has to do much less work. So for that reason, it could be much smaller. Um, and so that has other advantages of as far as like the sizing of the capacitor and stuff like that. So that's that's kind of when I was going back to making engineering decisions and value value judgments. Like they designed this chip to be able to handle very small input capacitor because uh, they thought it was advantageous to be able to use a very small input capacitor because it lowers your, your footprint and stuff like that. Anyway, so let's just get back to the equation. So they give us some new terms that we got to look up. So we have I run, and so that is I run. If you look in the glossary, it is referring to the... I actually don't know if they mention I run. Well, I mean, they I know they mention it in the data sheet. So I run is uh, it's in like table 7.5 and it refers to the supply current for running. And I chose the maximum value um, of 2.65 milliamps. And so again, I got that from the data sheet. We have C out. So if you look at C out, it doesn't actually match what our, we saw for for our capacitor. So I chose a value that was much greater. And I used reference schematics to choose this because I wanted uh, I wanted any time that there was new variables require my, some of my old calculations I kind of I would look at I would look at things um, like when I was doing the calculations like off off camera I would do my I would do my own calculations and I kind of compare it to reference designs and I'm trying to figure out 
uh, which which answers I was more confident in and uh, which like based on on my experience level and stuff like that, which ones I would want to go with. So in these cases, I'm usually I would side with the application circuit and I would kind of just go with what they did for the terms of our, our calculations, at least uh, just because I thought I'd wanted to keep me on track. I didn't want to like go way off course here and wonder why I have like because like, it's sort of like a compounding error, right? So you get this wrong. And as a result, you get this wrong and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so this is why I end up choosing this. So this is, and this will work because this is this is this like our our equation for the major for the CDD on the output here. Uh, this is like a minimum requirement. So as long as you have something greater, like your circuit will work just fine. Um, but I just want to choose this that way I can still have something to compare to further down the road if that makes sense. But yeah, so I have a C out. Um, value selected of 560 microfarads or 560 mics. The VOCC value. So again, if you look at, um, let me go down to the glossary. VOCC is the output for con the constant current level. So we have it set at, um, is it, well, let me see. It's what it says, VOCC, because I have 4.75 volts. So, VOCC is the target lowest converter output voltage in constant current regulation. So I got this value from the data sheet. Again, um, if you look on one of the application tables, it gives you this value. So this is just, I, this is more like an industry standard value again. So this is kind of why I went with it. Um, I think this is, this is again, that kind of story I iterated where this is like the best engineers can usually do for um, power supplies that kind of meet this specification so to speak. So that's that's why I pick 4.75 volts. I out, we set that value uh, to one amp. It's the value we choose. VDD on and VDD off are found in the data sheet as well. I think I might have mentioned at least one of them earlier. It uh, VDD off is the under voltage lockout turn off voltage and VDD on is the under voltage lockout turn on voltage. So they're both found in one of the tables in the data sheet. And their values are 21 volts and 8.1 volts respectively. So when you plug all these numbers in here, you get, again, this is, this is what I was talking about with it. Forget the units part. Just know this is times 10 to the negative three. And so is that one. That's 10 to the negative six. Because what happens when you multiply amps times microfarads times volts divided by volts? Like how does that give you microfarads or how does that give you farads? Like don't ask me, but. Just know uh, our value comes out to be around uh, 0 0.85 microfarads or 850 nanofarads. Um, so again, you just pick a value that's at least that or greater. Um, and then capacitance, capacitance wise, like you don't have to have as much headroom necessarily because this is again, like it could, this could be a major constraining factor where you need a capacitor that's just, you know, as small as you can make it. So at the end of the day, you might be choosing a value that's really close to this. Um, so it's again, it's one of those value, value judgment. It's one of those value calls. So that pretty much covers it for the uh, CDD, the capacitor on the input of the VDD pin.